Where to start? Well, that's certainly a tough question to answer. I suppose it all started on that one fateful evening. The Ivan Sowers Mystery Hours are proudly brought to you by Channel Your Random. For all your entertainment needs, it's Channel Your Random. On today's episode, Ivan gets a mysterious letter and has to take a trip to the convenience store. I was keeping to myself that night with a glass of apple juice and my favorite novel. The lights were dimmed, my bath was drawn, and the evening was coming to a close. All of a sudden, I heard the sound of footsteps on my porch. And a few seconds later, the sound of the buzzer resonated throughout my home. As I approached the door, the buzzer sounded again. Opening the door, I was greeted by a short man with flaming red hair and a mustache, black as night. Are you Ivan Sowers? Yes, that's me, I responded. I have a letter for you. Don't open it till you buy yourself, and please, read it in private. He said as he handed me a manila envelope marked Confidential. I took the envelope from him, and as soon as it was in my hand, the man took off running. Wait! I don't know what this is about. But it was too late. He was gone. I slowly retreated into my abode, with nothing but questions in my head. Who was the man? What was in this envelope? Why could I only read it in private? There was only one way to find out. I would have to read it in private. I opened another can of apple juice, took a hefty swig, and began to open the envelope. I slowly reached my hand inside and pulled out a single piece of letter-sized paper. There was one line of typed text on the paper, and it read, Meet me at the place where you'd most likely be on a Friday night. It could only have meant the convenience store on 33rd and Arnold Street. Everyone knew that place was my favorite Friday night hunt. I glanced at my antique clock. 9.51 p.m. They were almost closed. I needed to hurry. I grabbed my house keys and put on my robe. Opening the front door, I was greeted by a torrential downpour. This wasn't going to be a fun ride. I quickly flipped open the garage, fired up my moped, and took off. The voyage was difficult, with rain in my face, the wind testing my mopeding skills, and the short clock I had to work with. I arrived at the convenience store at 9.58. I had barely dismounted when a cloaked figure appeared at the entrance to the store. He spoke in a hushed, yet refined voice. Hurry inside, we haven't much time. I hesitated briefly, then quickly stepped through the door of the store. All of a sudden, the cloaked man pulled me into the second aisle, pushing me down into a ducking position. The lights in the store suddenly turned off, and the man produced a lit candle from within his cloak. He spoke with an urgent tone. Whether or not you know it, you were recently exposed to a piece of incredibly sensitive information. In a short amount of time, you will be approached by a group of people who are desperate to get their hands on this information. It is of the utmost importance that you do not divulge any details of your encounter with said information. I was so confused. I had no idea what he could have been referring to. Without another word, he blew out the candle. I heard the wisp of his cloak, but couldn't see anything. Seconds later, the lights came back on, and I was by myself in the store. I heard a voice from behind the counter. Sir, we just like closed. Do you need to buy anything, man? Um, no. Where did the man in the cloak go? How did the lights come back on? Dude, I have like no idea what you're talking about. I've been watching you hunched over in that aisle now for like two minutes, and if you don't need anything, bro, I'm just going to have to ask you to leave. Um, okay. Have a good night, I said, as I stood up and walked towards the door. 
I could feel the clerk's eyes on me even as I mounted my moped and pulled out of the parking lot. What a strange evening, I thought to myself, as I parked the moped in my garage and headed inside. I hadn't seen any sensitive information at all, or not that I knew of at least, but I guess that's what the guy had said, that I might not have known. I'd had some run-ins with difficult customers in the past regarding private data, but nothing like this. I'd always just chalked it up to one of the occupational hazards of doing computer repairs, but this, this felt different. The only thing I could do was sleep on it for the night. After a nice warm glass of apple juice, I started to doze off. Thanks for tuning in to the Ivan Sowers Mystery Hours. Don't forget to like the episode and subscribe to our channel so we can let you know every time a new episode airs. Until next time, this has been the Ivan Sowers Mystery Hours on Channel Your